Well, hi, and welcome to the Owatonna Today Show, your community connection since 1991. Today is Friday, July 7, and I'm Pete Connor, your show's host, and we're going to be having a couple of folks to talk about some, oh, I suppose, divergent uh, interests. Uh, Jerry Ganfield will be up shortly to talk about uh, history center things, uh, historical society things, including the extravaganza that's upcoming. And then we'll have Aaron McGee from the National Parkinson Foundation of Minnesota will come and help us to understand a little bit more about that disease and about the things that are happening at the foundation level. As always on Friday, we like to highlight our sponsors, so uh, I'd like to uh, do that. And uh, we'll talk about our premier sponsors right now, the City of Owatonna and Owatonna Public Utilities. Our primary sponsors are Amy Swain Hearing Centers, Fairway Foods, Little Theater of Owatonna, Owatonna Foundation. And our interlude sponsors, Bremer Bank, Brenda Bednar Mortgage Office, Cedar Valley Services, Carlson, Branstead & Company CPAs, ERA Gillespie Real Estate, Fairview Animal Medical Center, Horizon Eye Care, Owatonna Area Business Development Center, Steel County Historical Society and the Steel County Transitional Housing, the Third Hand Video Productions, Tri-M Graphics, and TPS Insurance. And we always like to say, let those people know that you are watching Owatonna today because of them. Uh, that's the kind of support that we'd like to have for them. Uh, we are here because they are here. Uh, and if you do know of people who might be good sponsors, why don't you let us know? Give Leanne a call at 390-5751 and let her know. And now we're going to take a few minutes for uh, some commercial messages, and we'll be right back with Jerry. So don't go away. Hi, I'm Dr. Beth Giltvet. And I'm Dr. Nick Vincelli of Horizon Eye Care. We want you to see what you love and love how you see. We're proud sponsors of the Owatonna Today Show. Welcome back to the Otana Today Show, your community connection, and welcome to Jerry Danfield, an old friend and, uh, and colleague of yes. some sorts, I guess. Uh, Jerry, always good to have you on the show. And, Thank you. Uh, we're going to talk about a bunch of things going on. Summer, summer is always a big time for the uh, History Center and for the society. It is. We, we focus a lot on getting ready for July yeah. for our extravaganza. Yeah. And, of course, we've added the, the Gus's Station Car Show, which follows yeah. uh, on the 22nd after the 16th extravaganza. Sure. But it involves a lot of time and effort on part of the staff and a lot of fun and volunteers that are required and, and demonstrators and entertainers and, yeah. and of course good food. And good food, yeah. And it's all for one, a few hours in one day. Right. It's our major fundraiser yeah. and yeah. as you know we are not a, uh, supported through tax dollars. We are uh, a non-profit and private and mm -hmm. so we have to raise funds uh, continually to Con yeah, constant, isn't it? Mm -hmm. um, to that point, is do you have someone on staff that's a development director or a, a, a fundraiser? Uh, we have a committee that is a fund development committee that is just getting going. Uh, involves three um, board members and three non, you know, board members, people sure. from the community. Good. How long have you been involved with the, the society and and specifically with the history center? Well, I was. Um, uh, invited to uh, join the board in 1998, so mm -hmm. I've been involved since then, mm -hmm. and uh, became on the board and was have been a tour guide and mm -hmm. and been affiliated uh, uh, ever since in some capacity. Yeah, yeah. So well, you're you're a, a Gandhi guy, uh, mm -hmm. retired. Yes. So I imagine plenty of time now at the history center. Well, yes. Yeah, uh, yeah I'm there nearly every day yeah. for some something, whether it's a school tour or or doing something um, for the, with the staff. Yeah. Uh, the History Center, of course, was a big step for the society, sure. um, thanks to uh, Glenn Degner's trust that gave us a steadier income mm -hmm. each month. Um, he left um, an estate in his will, managed by Wells Fargo, mm -hmm. and we get so much from, uh, of interest each month that helps us. Yeah, you know, it, it's uh, you know, amazing, uh, well, maybe not amazing, uh, but w w to go out there and to see th the, th the things that are there that come from here, mm -hmm. you know, Steel County. Uh, it's, just, it's just like walking into, you know, the Science Museum or into a place, you know, that has you know, 
you know, big metro kind of, you know, it has that feel of, of very professional and so well, well done. Well, we certainly uh, strive for that. And of course, our present exhibits, uh, World War One exhibit being the 100th anniversary mm -hmm. of World War One, uh, is probably the most extensive in that we created so many different uh, tableaus, mm -hmm. uh, interactive displays, and focusing on veterans from Steele County mm -hmm. that have that served in World War One, And you can... Uh, walk through a trench, you can smell the smells, hear the mm -hmm. sounds of uh, World War I, uh, the old airplanes and the, the mortar rounds. You can push buttons and mm -hmm. you can hear kind of what they did. There's a bunker yeah. and you can go in there and, and learn more about uh, Steel County veterans in World sure. War I. And then we also have the autos and roads display. Uh -huh. So it talks about uh, development roads in the state and uh, we're gonna have an event coming up on that uh, combined with a book signing by Doug Myers, who oh, just oh, sure. uh, yeah. uh, published a book um, that deals with the development of yeah. this area. Yeah, Who's, do you have professional people who come in to, to lay out the, the, the displays? For um, the World War I, we dealt with a firm called Museology okay. out of the metro area that guided us in how to select uh, colors and um, fonts and everything mm -hmm. for the best uh, uh, readability and interpretation. Okay. Now, so uh, do you do you have all of the stuff like you say, push a button and you can listen to? Do, does that does that stuff stay in a room until it's used again, or do you bring it in from some other place? Well, we developed most of that. Uh, um, and not all of it. I mean, we have the songs. You have, we have a karaoke station, okay. so we have them playing the World War songs you can sing along mm -hmm. with, and you can read the words on the screen. Mm -hmm. um, we have the singing by Harry Brown. I don't know if you uh, know Harry Brown, but he was a state schooler, mm -hmm. graduated sure. from OHS. Sure. And even though that's a long time ago, because he served in World War I, yeah. um, we have four of the songs that he recorded awesome. that you can play. Yeah. Uh, we're going to talk, I want to get to the extravaganza, but let's highlight some of the other things that are going on. And you've got some uh, posters that you want to share mm -hmm. with us to tell us about some other um, events that are... Well, the first one is the extravaganza. Right. It's Sunday the 16th of July from 11.30 to 4.30, and we have some new events this mm -hmm. year. Um, we're having a mini barn raising, mm -hmm. so uh, kids and their parents can raise a barn, and that's under the supervision of Moe's Construction. Yeah. And they're going to raise that barn between, uh, just as a fun exercise, between Gus's station and the carriage house. Yeah. Uh, so that's a new event. We're selling book tea again, uh, individually, as well as you can buy half oh. dozen or dozens. Uh, Who's making them? Uh, you know. I knew you'd ask me. People who know how to make them, <laughs> I think right? it's Mrs. Miller, but I... <laughs> and, yeah, right. um, and we, um, we also have um, pie and ice cream this mm. year, not just cake and ice cream. Yeah. So we've been uh, very generously <laughs> donated some uh, pies from commercial bakeries, you know, mm. the Bakery in Blooming yeah. and the Colonel and other uh, establishments in town, nice, so we yeah. can have the true American... Uh, pie and ice cream, oh, as nice. well as cake, if yeah, you don't yeah. like cake. <laughs> yeah. okay. and so um, we're looking forward to that. It should be a lot of fun. Yeah. It's a fun day, and we have the tractor show. Mm -hmm. um, in, uh, actually, the the, uh, uh, the contest to see if you can uh, back up a hay wagon, wagon better than the neighbor. <laughs> I know on the farm when I was there, if I had to back up, I said, oh, no. And then my uncles are watching this, you know. <laughs> So that's kind of fun, and so we'll have the, the old tractors, and then we'll have a nice. tractor parade, yeah. as well as the contests. And then we have... Um, Is that going to be on uh, the... That'll Sunday? be at the north end okay. uh, by the Owatonna Foundation right. building. Cool. And then we have Gus's uh, car yeah. station, and we have uh, a big effort there. Uh, and the funds from that will go towards the service bay we hope to build for our car collection, mm -hmm. which includes that 1919 Dodge. Mm -hmm the Alexander truck and perhaps yeah. one more. I have a lot of interest in that personally just because of my involvement with some of the old OTC things. Right. So that, and th that will be a breakfast as well as the car show and then they're doing a rally with the cars uh, from here down to the Ellendale Muni ah. where they will have lunch yeah. <laughs> by that time. And there's trophies for the entrance and People's Choice Award yeah. uh, for that day as well and the first hundred cars get a, a plaque, mm. a dash plaque oh, nice. for participation. So, you know, the, and the other things that are, you know, the whole, the whole 
um, area is available, so people are going to, I know as an example, I'm going to be sitting in the, the town hall, mm -hmm. to talk a little bit about the government uh, of the day uh, in, in, in that respect. So all of the buildings are going to be open for That's you. true. Uh, Mary Ann Higgins is our new uh, volunteer mm -hmm. coordinator, and she has really been working hard to get most buildings hosted mm -hmm. so that people can at least uh, greet people and mm -hmm. um, explain things. Um, and um, Stephanie Kibler has been working on the entertainment. Mm -hmm. um, so we have lots of musical entertainment mm -hmm. and um, we're going to have a fun day. Yeah, yeah, and who's in charge of weather? <laughs> well, uh, the only time we've postponed it was last year. Out of all 31 years, we've yeah. had extravaganza. And we shouldn't have because, of course, the day turned out better. Even though yeah. the next weekend we had good weather, mm -hmm. we had a lot of commitments that other people had for sure. that weekend. So sure. we hope we have the weather and uh, it's going to go forward, rain or shine. You know, it's, you know, I guess it's the only way to we do it. We have lots of things for kids, mm. games for kids, the sack races, the mm. musical milk cans. Uh, things like that, so so parents can see their kids compete yeah, in nice. the old-fashioned games and eat. Are there food besides the uh, pie and ice cream? And, oh yes, uh, we have uh, lunch, ears, like sandwiches, food. sloppy joes, mm. um, and kettle corn. Yeah. Uh, so there will be quite will a variety. Not go away hungry. No. Yeah. No. Any fee for entrance? No, it's free. Okay. Uh, we raise the money through the sale of food, basically. Okay. So we encourage people to come with an appetite. Yeah. <laughs> Good. Starts again at what and time? It starts at 11.30, on Sunday the 16th. Uh, the Donnell House this year features a 22 artifacts from the Kenyon family that mm. some people may be aware of. Mm -hmm. uh, dresses mainly um, date from 1880 to about 1920. Mm. Nice, nice. So special display there. Uh, you know, I mean, being a homer, kind of a partisan, I'm going to say that I think our society and our history center is probably one of the, it's got to be a, a premier place. You know, of, of, of them around. You know, I think we kind of probably do it. It's kind of self-serving, but I think we well, do it better than a lot of places. We are proud of it, and we give tours. We're in conjunction, of course, with the Chamber of Commerce on Step Back in Time tours, mm -hmm. and many of those come from um, out either from Iowa or the metro area, mm -hmm. and they have been to many places, and mm -hmm. they compliment us greatly mm -hmm. on the cleanliness and the freshness of our mm -hmm. village and the fact that it was well planned mm -hmm. from the beginning. Right, and then we had the stuff to, to bring there mm -hmm. from 1850. Right. Yeah, wonderful. Well, I look forward to seeing you on the grounds uh, on that day, and uh, I hope that our viewers are going to participate uh, to the extent that they can, and uh, so uh, make a plan for that particular day. And thanks, Jerry, for being here to help us know more about it all. Thank you very much. You're welcome, and thanks for being with us on this particular segment. We're going to take a quick break for some messages, and then we'll be right back with Aaron McGee. Stay with us. Amy Swain Hearing Centers is a proud sponsor of the Owatonna Today Show. I'm Dr. Amy Swain, and I want everyone to hear better. Recreational fires are allowed within the Owatonna city limits. They must be contained within a fire pit or a device designed for such use and can be three feet in diameter and no more than three feet high. They must be 25 feet from a building or combustibles. Only untreated or unpainted woods must be used. Fires must be attended by a person at all times that are capable of extinguishing the fire. This has been a safety tip from the Owatonna Fire Department. Hi, I'm Betsy Linger from the Owatonna Foundation. Your generosity has made Owatonna a better place to live by benefiting our community, the arts, recreation, and education. Please consider a donation today. The Owatonna Foundation is a proud sponsor of the Owatonna Today Show. At Triumph Graphics, we think beyond ink. That's why you should make us your source for creative concept, design, print, mail, and web. Check us out today at triumphgraphics.com. you can talk to we're growing with you with you in mind in everything we do oh it's on a public utilities 
Welcome back to the Otana Today Show, your community connection, and a big welcome to Erin McGee uh, from Metro Columbia Heights. Yes. Girl. Uh, yeah. Nice to have you here in Otana. Thanks for having me. I'm happy to be here. Probably not a place you come to a whole lot. Well, um, I'm program manager at the Parkinson's Foundation Minnesota yeah. chapter, so yeah. I actually travel a lot. Okay. So I've been up to the Fargo area this summer, Duluth, Otana, Albert Lee, mm -hmm. Rochester, and Mankato, Wilmer, Alexandria, and yeah. St. Cloud. Well, this is, you know, I think our viewers, I would expect, are going to see this with high interest because of the prevalence, it seems, of, of Parkinson's and, and the greater you know, um, uh, occurrences of, of the disease among our population. Um, before we get to that, though, mm -hmm. your, your background to be in this role started with your education. Yeah. Yep. So I'm a, I have a Bachelor of Science in Recreational Therapy, mm -hmm. and I utilize that working at Bethesda Hospital in St. Paul. Mm -hmm. And um, I primarily worked with the Capistrant Parkinson Center mm -hmm. for outpatient services. And so I facilitated fitness classes, dance class, Tai Chi, Nordic walking, and clay class. Mm -hmm. So it was really amazing to have seven years experience working with the Parkinson's community. Mm -hmm. And it is a great fit now to be able to do the education and outreach. Yeah, excellent. So, you know, the foundation has been in existence for how long? Oh, for you know. 30 plus years. No, it is that long. <laughs> Oh, yeah. well, I just, wouldn't have thought that. Well, just the Minnesota chapter yeah. is celebrating its 30th Parkinson's walk wow. in the metro area. So there's been, um, it was really a grass, grassroots effort starting with families that mm. were, had connections to Parkinson's yeah. to raise funds yeah. to help with research and make sure that people are cared for. And, and it is, you know, it's the disease, that, as far as we know, has no cure uh, at this point in time and and, uh, and and so therefore what you are involved in principally is education. Yeah, we provide education, support and resources mm -hmm. for those affected by Parkinson's. So um, my hope is that people know we're out there, we're available so they're not facing the disease alone right. because it can be a long journey. People yeah. live with Parkinson's 20, 30, um, e even 38 years is the longest I've heard of someone living with That's Parkinson's. So, yeah. so, And it's a progressive disease so the symptoms change. Um, so it really does take the whole family and the community to know how to provide support mm -hmm. for not just that person living with Parkinson's, but for the caregivers and the family and right. everyone else. What, what sorts of things are you finding um, and therefore being able to tell about mm -hmm. what people who contract the disease are able to do to kind of stem the symptoms? You know, what, what sorts of activity? And, and of course, from your background, yeah. re recreation. Well, I am a big, you know, proponent for exercise, and now we have the researched evidence to show that having at least two and a half hours a week of exercise can really make a big difference in managing your Parkinson's symptoms and help you um, even slow the progression. Mm. And having a variety of exercise, not just aerobic, but adding some strength training and stretching. Mm -hmm. And even trying something new could help keep those brain cells moving yeah. and even reproducing. Because right. what ha what's happening with Parkinson's is you're having neur neurons die mm. from the lack of dopamine. Okay. And so if you can try new exercise, try new things, there might be ways to help reproduce those neurons. Okay. So fitness is the biggest piece right now that we know can help manage. But there's also other components of just being out and being active in the community. Mm -hmm. um, unfortunately, we know that depression and anxiety can um, go right along with Parkinson's. Mm. And so people tend to isolate, staying at home. Mm. And so we want to build community support and show you're not alone. It's a self-image self you know, thing, you know, um, of, I don't want people to see me. Absolutely, same with the tremor. Yeah. You know, um, oh, I don't, I don't feel comfortable going out to eat because yeah. my food's gonna go flying everywhere. Yeah. And sometimes Parkinson's symptoms, like trouble walking or softness of voice can be misinterpreted for intoxication. Mm. So I've had people share stories of them being asked to leave restaurants mm. because they appear intoxicated. Wow. Yeah. So there's a lot of education to be done well, to the not, general public. Exactly, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. um, medications are available. I yes, know. yes, there is a whole variety and they're actually having more come out now than ever before. Yeah. We are just celebrating well, the 50th anniversary of the primary medication called levodopa that helps manage the Parkinson's symptoms. And, and w earlier we just said, I said that, you know, there's an increased prevalence of the disease. Why is that? 
What's going on? That's a great that? question. Uh, our population is aging. Our baby boomers are getting older. And um, it's very similar to the increase of Alzheimer's dementia. Mm -hmm. So as the population increase, um, it's the most uh, average diagnosis age is over the age of 60. Mm -hmm. So as our population is aging, the statistics say an average of uh, every nine minutes someone is diagnosed with mm -hmm. Parkinson's disease. So, mm -hmm. and it's a worldwide uh, disease. No one is not affected. I mean, mm. it's, it affects every culture, every continent, um, everyone. So we're all in this together to find ways to help provide quality of life and ways to help mm. move, move towards a cure. So apparently there's no place on the globe that sort of is like an island where you don't, no. you don't see. No. Incidents. Last September I went to the World Parkinson Congress in Portland and they had 47 countries represented. Wow. And in 2019 it'll be in, um, I think, Oh, I can't remember. I think it's in Japan somewhere. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So it's this, I mean, it's international. And yeah. there's a, it's amazing to see the collaboration between um, professionals across the globe sure. to really work on finding help and treatment. Right. So, you know, I, I, I just I personalize this by saying, you know, I'm, I guess I'm an older American, you know, and I, I don't know that I have any incidents of, you know, I don't think there's anything, but how, what could I do to maybe be more sure if I wanted to. Yeah, so we actually have a really great brochure about the 10 early warning signs of Parkinson's because a lot of people know the signs and symptoms of stroke or heart attack, yeah. but not many people know that there could be early warning signs. So you can visit our website or give us a call, but some of the things I hear as I've traveled in the community of, oh, I've had constipation for a while. Mm. I've had trouble sleeping. I haven't been, smelled anything for years. Mm. I had no idea that those were early warning signs of Parkinson's. Mm. And I never mentioned them to my doctor because I thought it was parts of aging, yeah. just normal parts of aging, right. which they're not. And there's could be medication, there could be something else going on that creates those symptoms. So just getting the messages out there about some of the symptoms you and know, that there's treatment available. And I, you know, sometimes I think too, you know, um, where's denial in this in the, that uh, whole process? I don't know. No, no, no. It's got to be, as you yeah. said, it's something else. You Everyone know, copes differently. We've had people um, call us. It's been six years, and I'm just starting to accept that mm. I have Parkinson's. Mm. And I've had people get the diagnosis Friday, and they call us Monday. Mm. How can I get involved? Where are our support groups? I need education. Mm. And so it's. You know, there's a large gray area, so we try to help serve the whole gamut of mm -hmm. how people are accepting. Yeah, uh, and uh, uh, to the extent that one can can live, you know, uh, effective effectively, and you know, have a so-called good life, mm -hmm. uh, doing what kinds of things? Well, we talked about the fitness, right. uh, the medication, staying active in the community, and I think it's important to stay on top of education, keep yourself informed, yeah. so you know what's the newest research coming out. Mm -hmm. um, is there new medications that might be able to help? Um, you know, just to keep on the front end and to make sure you have a good care team. Um, we're lucky to have um, so many choices in Minnesota. Mm -hmm. And Owatonna has Rochester to choose from, go up to the Metro, the Twin Cities. So there's lots of fits. So I really encourage people to find um, a doctor that they are comfortable with. And sure. if not, find a second opinion. It's right. okay to make a fit. Right. Uh, lots of, of uh, diseases have support groups as well. Is, yeah, is one just is getting started in here in Owatonna. Okay. So I have been communicating with um, Alina and Courage Kenny as they're getting mm -hmm. it started. And I met with a, a potential facilitator recently to help encourage and support her and right. and see how, how else can we share with our resources and help them get going yeah. in their support group. So we, we are on the radar here in Owatonna yes. in uh, Steele County. And you have an informational session. Yes, we have um, an education um, program coming up on Wednesday, July 12th. Okay. Um, Check-in is at 12.45, and the program will start with one. And we'll do kind of a brief chapter overview, share our resources and things that we have going on. Mm -hmm. And then I'm really excited to have the University of Minnesota Udall Center of Excellence for Parkinson's here to talk about updates of the research they're doing at the local level. Yeah. So it's just awesome to hear, wow, this is what you're learning, and here are the outcomes and things that can affect my life and yeah. also the future of Parkinson's. Sure. And then we also have a speaker talking about mental health and mm -hmm. cognition changes with Parkinson's. Okay, and I wanted to ask that, and we're getting close to having to uh, tie it up, but, mm -hmm. uh, but the, the, we know the physical, you know, the tremor, tremors and so forth, but what about the cognition, the cognitive skills? 
Well, how, I'll, how? I'll explain it this way. So you see the motor symptoms of Parkinson's, the mm. tremor, the slowness, the difficulty walking. That's literally the tip of the iceberg. Mm. There's so many other symptoms that um, affect the whole body. Uh, so, so it's a holistic it, disease well, in, it, a, in a way. It's really, you know, you see the motor symptoms, but there's a lot of other things going on yeah. that you can't see at the surface. Yeah. So the cognition is one of them that you might not be able to know right away. Sure. So, and you'll learn more about that if you come to my event. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, I may, may you just have to do or that. Or visit my website or give me a call. That, you know, we'll mm -hmm. take that on, I think, uh, uh, primary. So, uh, but this has been great. Uh, great information. I'm happy Thanks to for be being here. here to come make the trip down and... Uh, we look forward to seeing you in town again, and um, best wishes with your work and with your growing family. Thank you. Excellent. Yeah. Thank you. And thanks to you for being with us today. Uh, we're going to take uh, a few minutes for, uh, maybe some, not minutes, but some time for some uh, sponsored messages, and we'll be right back. So please stay here. Hi, my name is Dave Efforts with TPS Insurance. We're here to handle all your insurance needs. We are a very proud supporter of the Otana Today Show. Welcome back to the Otana Today Show, your community connection. Some community announcements. Be our guest, which is serving the community with meals in God's name. Free meals are available each week at Otana in the following locations. Tuesdays, St. Vincent's Table at St. Joseph's Catholic Church, serving from 5.30 to 7 p.m. On Wednesday, Bethel Community Supper at Bethel Baptist Church, serving from 5 until 6 p.m. And on Sunday, Meals of Hope at Trinity Lutheran Church, serving from 5 until 6.15 p.m. Join the Steele Colony Historical Society for its 31st annual extravaganza, being held from on July 16th in the village of yesteryear from 11.30 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. Admission is free. Uh, wine, women, and golf for the very beginner uh, or non-golfer uh, at Brooktree, Saturday, July 15th at, from 2 to 3.30. Also on Saturday the 15th from 3.30 to 5. And on Wednesday, July 26th from 3 to 4.30, $15 fee includes three holes of golf, one helper to an answer questions, and a glass of wine. Movies in the Park coming up on the 14th at Brown Park, a rain date on the 15th at Central Park. The movie will be The Great Outdoors, starts uh, pre um, uh, movie stuff at um, an hour before movie time. Uh, just be there and see uh, a good uh, movie. That's going to take care of it for today. We want you to come back on Monday when we'll have Faisal Laka from Businessware Solutions on Internet Security, as well as a revisit to the Library Gardens with Luann Kappa. Have a great weekend. Look forward to having you back here on Monday.